Polaris debunks flat earth. Sorry, it really does. Simple observations that you can make yourself will prove to you that the earth is not flat. In this video, first I'm going to cover some very basic trigonometry. This is going to be aimed at someone who knows absolutely nothing about maths or who has forgotten everything they learned at school. I apologize to people who know their trigonometry, uh, but we want no excuses. I'm going to show how basic trigonometry can be used. We're going to use the tan, tan function, the tangent function, to find angles. And we're going to describe an experiment that you can do yourself. We're going to comp compare predictions to reality. And we're also going to debunk the myth that you can't know what surface you're on by looking at the sky. Right angle triangles and the tan function. Here is a right angle triangle. It's a triangle that has one right angle, a right angle being 90 degrees. We have an angle here that we're going to deal with, and we're going to call that angle theta. You could call it x, you could call it anything you like. Uh, the normal way is to call it theta. We have the opposite side, which is opposite the angle. We have the adjacent, which runs, runs along the bottom. And we have the hypotenuse. This is pretty much all you need to know about right angle triangles. OK, the tangent function. Really, really simple. Here we have a right angle triangle. We have the angle theta. We have the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. Now, with regards to the tangent function, we're not interested in the hypotenuse. We don't need it. So we're going to get rid of that. And from there, it is uh, defined that the tangent of the angle theta is given by the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter what the units are. It could be miles, it could be meters, millimeters, it could be light years. It's just a, a simple ratio of the length of the opposite side to the adjacent side. Okay, ah, an example. Here we have another right angle triangle. Let's imagine it has uh, a side length for the opposite of 16. Uh, could be 16 meters, doesn't matter. And an adjacent length of 35. As long as they're the same units, uh, we have a simple ratio. Um, tangent of theta equals 16 divided by 35, which is 0 0.457. Now that's not the angle. To get the angle, we use the inverse tangent function. You'll find this on any scientific calculator. Simply put in that theta is the tangent, uh, inverse tangent of 0 0.457, and you will get an answer of 24.56 degrees. That is this angle here, theta. You can try this out, draw some triangles, make sure they're neat uh, and that they've got a, a very good uh, 90 degrees. Just draw some random lengths, as long as it makes a right angle triangle. Measure the lengths use a calculator to calculate theta and then you'll need a simple protractor to measure the angle and see if you're correct and you'll find this is very very accurate. Using the tangent function in real situations. Okay let's imagine we have a large room or a large building here and we have a nice light bulb hanging down from the ceiling and we know the height of that light bulb. Okay we put some guys at various distances along the floor here. Um, as long as we know these distances from directly beneath the light bulb, we can calculate the angles here, theta. And this is used all the time for various things uh, in architecture, etc. to calculate angles. It's very, very accurate simply using the tangent function. So, what does this have to do with the shape of the Earth? Well, certain things we know. We know that Polaris is directly overhead at the North Pole. Polaris is a convenient star to use. We could use any star, but uh, Polaris is good because it remains in pretty much the same place throughout the night uh, within uh, less than half a degree, I believe. Polaris drops in elevation by one degree for every 69 miles we move away from the North Pole. This has been known for centuries, if not millennia. And for the purposes of this video and this experiment, we're going to approximate the distance from the North Pole to the equator at 6,000 miles. It's actually slightly more, it's about 6,215. Okay, the experiment. Now, 
Globe Earth believers are often criticised for assuming that we live on a ball, uh, presupposing that we live on a globe. Well, we're not going to do that with this experiment. We're going to actually presuppose that we live on a flat Earth. That's our assumption, and that's a fair assumption, I suppose. Um, it looks flat locally. Um, so, here we have the flat Earth, side view, North Pole on the right there, Polaris above us at the North Pole, the equator there, 6,000 miles away. We don't know the height to Polaris, so I'm going to cover this very shortly. Bear with me. But we can always take uh, measurements. There's Polaris taken from different measurements, different positions um, from the North Pole all the way to the equator. Uh, it's very easy to take the angle of Polaris. So, as we said, we don't know how far Polaris is above the flat Earth. So we're going to try three different scenarios. Option one, we're going to assume that Polaris is very close. It's 100 miles above the Earth. Option two, we're going to put Polaris quite far away, 3,000 miles above the Earth. And option three, we're going to put Polaris incredibly far away, trillions of miles. Basically, we could approximate to an infinite distance, but we'll say trillions of miles. OK, option one, Polaris 100 miles above the North Pole. Let's zoom in close to the North Pole. We've got Polaris here, which we are going to pretend is 100 miles above. And what I'm going to do is take our little guy here 100 miles south of the North Pole and see what we see. Now here's our right angle triangle uh, with angle theta there. So we're just going to use the tangent function as we did before to work out this angle theta. And that is just 100, which is the opposite, and 100, which is the adjacent. The tangent of theta is 100 divided by 100. And that, of course, equals 1. So theta is the inverse tangent of 1. And that gives us 45 degrees. So what happens in reality when we move 100 miles south of the North Pole? In reality, Polaris is still elevated by 88.55 degrees. So it doesn't take a genius to see there is something immediately wrong with this model. Sorry, guys. OK, so option two, we decided we were going to put Polaris at 3,000 miles above the flat Earth. Uh, there's a reason I chose 3,000 miles, and you will see that very shortly. So let's draw our flat Earth again. North Pole and the equator, 6,000 miles from the North Pole to the equator, and Polaris, we're going to say at 3,000 miles. OK, here's our little guy, and I'm going to put him 3,000 miles away from the North Pole. The reason for this will become apparent. We're going to look at the tangent again, and again, it's a very simple calculation. Tangent of theta equals 3,000 divided by 3,000, which again equals 1. Uh, theta is the inverse tangent of 1, which is 45 degrees. And in reality, it's 45 degrees. Yippee! We seem to have a match. We've got two points that match here. At the North Pole, Polaris is directly above our heads. We know this on the, on the uh, globe Earth, and this is also what the flat Earth says. And also, the flat Earth predicts that at 3,000 miles south of the North Pole, Polaris will be elevated by 45 degrees. Yes, we have a match. But there is a problem. We now take our guy all the way to the equator, and this gives us another right angle triangle. We're going to call this angle theta 2. So, from the right angled triangle formula, we know that the tangent of theta 2 is 3,000 divided by 6,000, which is 0 0.5. Theta 2 equals the inverse tangent of 0 0.5, which is 26.56 degrees. Here comes the problem. In reality, at the equator, Polaris is elevated by 0 degrees. It is on the horizon. Uh -uh, there is something wrong. Okay, I want to explain option two a little bit further and see why it's a, an interesting one. Um, what we're going to do is plot a graph of the distance from uh, the North Pole 
uh, from 0 to 6,000 miles, 6,000 miles being the equator. And we're going to plot that against the elevation of Polaris, the elevation that we actually can observe uh, from 0 to 90 degrees, or the other way around. And this is what we see in reality, um, 90 degrees down to 0 degrees. And it's a linear graph. It's uh, 1 degree every 69 miles. Okay, the flat Earth prediction um, is a curved line. Uh, and this is why we get these two matching positions. You get a uh, matching position at the North Pole. Both models say that the uh, Polaris should be above our heads. And at 45 degrees, for, uh, 6,000 miles away, sorry, 3,000 miles away from the, um, uh, from the North Pole, both models say 45 degrees. But uh, what we observe in reality at the equator is Polaris at zero degrees. The flat Earth requires that Polaris is at 26 degrees. That's a huge discrepancy. If you go outside and point up in the air at 26 degrees, you'll see that that is really very, very far uh, and really quite highly elevated. Um, and we know that at the equator, Polaris it is zero degrees. It's on the horizon. So going back to option two, um, whilst it seemed a little bit hopeful there for a, a moment, um, it really falls apart once you go um, past 45, uh, 45 degrees or past 3,000 miles. So, nope, this is not an option either. Sorry. Okay, so option three, Polaris being extremely far above the flat Earth. Let's draw our little model. We've got uh, a side view of the Earth there, 6,000 miles from the North Pole to the equator. And we've got Polaris. We're going to put Polaris at 1 trillion miles. I know I said trillions of miles before. It doesn't really matter. A trillion miles is perfectly good uh, to demonstrate what we're trying to, to show. Um, here's our little guy. I'm going to put him all the way at the equator, 6,000 miles away from the North Pole. And he's going to uh, draw a line up to Polaris and measure the angle theta. But we're going to calculate... Uh, oh, yeah. Not, not to scale, of course. We're going to calculate what the angle should be and how much uh, Polaris should be elevated. So the tangent of theta is 10 to the power of 12, which is a trillion, divided by 6,000, which is 166,166,000 and change. Which means theta is the inverse tangent of that very large number, which gives us 89.9999996666 degrees. This is a problem. Even at the equator, Polaris would be around a millionth of one degree from being directly overhead. And the further away you put Polaris, the worse it makes this situation. We know that at the equator, Polaris is zero degrees elevated. It's on the horizon. Um, and we know that anyone south of the equator cannot see Polaris. Um, whereas this model would say that everyone on Earth would clearly be able to see Polaris every night. Sorry guys, this model doesn't work either. I'd just like to take a slightly different approach of uh, using the tangent function. And this is using the tangent function to find heights. Let's imagine we've got a tree. A lot of people have done this. Most people do it at school. Um, but if you've forgotten, here's a recap. We have a tree that's sitting on, a flat, on some flat ground. It has a height. And um, we don't know that height. But we can draw a right angle triangle like this, put our guy over there, and he chooses an arbitrary distance, and he decides to walk 26 meters away from the tree. It really doesn't make a lot of difference, uh, but he knows that length is 26 meters, and he measures the angle theta. However he, me you, however he measures that is up to him. There's various different ways, using a protractor and a plumb bob. Um, so he measures the angle, and then we... Uh, find that the angle it, it just happens to be 35 degrees okay so we use the simple formula the tangent of the angle which we know as 35 degrees is the opposite which is h the ang the, pro um, the value that we don't know divided by 26 the distance he is away from the base of the tree we just simply rearrange this formula to give us that the height is 26 multiplied by the tangent of 35 degrees which gives us 18.205 meters. 
This is used often by, uh, I think, tree surgeons, tree fellers, when they're going to fell a tree, they want to know if it's going to hit a certain building. Um, they can easily calculate the height um, of this tree by using this, uh, this simple um, calculation. Um, like I say, it doesn't matter what distance he moves away from the base of the tree because the angle will change so that when we use this formula, uh, we will still get the exact same height, 18.205 meters. Okay, so let's use that last uh, method to have a look at um, measurements uh, to Polaris. This time we're going to use some more exact figures. Um, the flat earth here shown the North Pole to the equator, 6,215 miles. Uh, Polaris here, we don't know the height of that, so we're going to calculate it. It should be fairly simple. So we put our guys at varying distances from the North Pole. We're going to put them at five different distances. Um, a thousand miles apart, so 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 and 5,000 miles away from the North Pole. And they're all going to measure their angles to Polaris. And let's see what we get. We should all get the same height. So, uh, a thousand miles, we know in real life, if you measure the angle to Polaris, a thousand miles from the North Pole, 75.52 degrees elevated is Polaris, which would give us a calculated altitude of 3,872 miles. Okay, fine. But 2,000 miles away, the measured angle to Polaris is 61.04 degrees. This gives us a calculated altitude of 3,614 miles. Bit of a discrepancy there. 3,000 miles away, measured angle 46.55 degrees. Uh, 3,167 miles altitude would be the calculated figure. Uh, 4,000 miles, the measured angle to Polaris is 32.07, which calculates out to 2,506 2506 miles elevation of Polaris. This is getting pretty bad. And at 5,000 miles distance, the measured angle in reality is 17.59 degrees and this gives us a height of Polaris of 1,585 miles above the flat earth. Basically this means that Polaris has to change in altitude for every observer. Depending on where you are on earth, Polaris changes its height individually for everybody. This isn't realistic. There is only one set of circumstances which give us what we observe in reality. That is an extremely distant Polaris and a round Earth. And we put our guys here and what we observe in reality is Polaris overhead at the North Pole. Uh, 3,000 miles from the North Pole, 45 degrees elevated and at 6,000 miles away on the equator this puts horizon on the horizon ha! puts Polaris on the horizon pardon me um, yeah sorry sorry flat earthers but if you want to deny basic trigonometry go right ahead Thanks for watching.